welcome back to the ZZ Mill Show. I'm ZZ Mills, and today we have a special guest. I mean, you probably heard him at every single moment of your day. At one point, you would have heard him on your radio. Today, we have in the building Fireboy DML. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Thank you for having me. How, How you? are you? I'm blessed. I feel good. You brought the hot weather with you. Wow, really? <laughs> well, like, honestly, do you reside here? Because you're no. here a lot. No, I'm actually not here a lot. It feels like you are. I feel like... I mean, recently I've spent quite enough time here. Right, 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 yeah. yeah. but I don't live here. I live in Lagos, Nigeria. So I'm saying you bought, like, how compared... What's the heat compared? Because I went to Ghana back in December, last yeah. December. absolutely loved it. And I absolutely loved the heat. I'm a heat person. Like, I want to be suffocating in this heat at every given moment. Like... I, don't think you want the kind of eat that is in Lagos. No, it's not the same. It's not the same. No, and what? surprisingly, I experienced a worse one than that when I went to Italy. It was crazy. I felt like taking off all my clothes on the road. What, what do you think the difference is? It because you think um, in like Nigeria, there's not a really much breeze, or here there's not much breeze. I feel like Caribbean heat is different from ours here. Yeah, it's as well. different. I think in Lagos, it's because the. Um, Ozone layer is pretty much non-existent. Right. And in Milan, I think it's because they smoke a lot. <laughs> I don't know, but I, it's, it was really hard when I went to Milan. We was just talking before we started and we were saying about you like wine. And I said to him, what type of wine do you like? And then he, I said, oh, are you going to say red? And he's like, no. He said, I think people red wine, I prejudge them. <laughs> people that like red wine. And I was like, go on, I love red wine. Tell me what the red wine means <laughs> equals. And he said, I think people that like red wine are sex addicts. And you know what? I had to walk away. <laughs> I wouldn't class myself as a sex addict. That is very extreme. But I definitely enjoy it, maybe more than I should. And maybe you're a sex addict, Zizi. It's, it's okay, just own it with your chest. It's fine, I, I'm not judging you. I don't think I am, though. <laughs> I don't think no, I there's, am. There's just a lot more aphrodisiac in, in um, the red wine. The red wine than the white wine. You when I want to chill, white wine. When I want to like just do most of my stuff, white wine. But when I'm like on a date, kind right. of, yeah, it's red, definitely. How is your dating life? I mean, you threw yourself in there. I was, gonna, <sighs> I was gonna wait till like maybe 30 minutes in, 40 minutes in, but you brought up- I walked right it. into that one, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah, you walked right into it. So how, how's the dating life? Chaotic. Okay, what does this mean? This, I'm guessing, okay, let me guess. So-so. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it means? Well, uh, how do I explain this? Let's just say, it's been situationships here and there, or whatnot. Cause, yeah. Because um, Playboy, right? Is the Playboy is the no? The, see? Actually, no. See, well, why? No. Why did you? No, do that. No, that. That's is contextual. That okay, Playboy okay. was like maybe like ten years ago. When you say, "Oh, you're a Playboy. You play girls." Nah, we don't do that. We don't use that phrase anymore. This Playboy that I, I meant, this kind of Playboy I meant, is like someone just loves to have fun, experience okay. things. But yeah. I have been termed emotionally unavailable. I mean, toxic oh, wow. and whatnot, you know, by women I mean, in the past. So I guess. I honestly feel that a lot of men are emotionally unavailable. Um, it's not a man thing. To be emotionally available. It's a human thing. It's not. Yeah, but men are not. If it's a human thing, then men should be good at it, and you're not. Only women seem to be that, like emo the most. Most women that I talk about the situationships that you're saying. Yeah. They will say the exact same thing. The men are not emotionally available. Of course, would. Who else would they blame? They, they don't blame, blame the men. They won't blame themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they will never blame themselves. Yeah, but it's true though. I'm dating. I'm out here dating in loads of situationship after situationship, and it's the same thing. Men, they're they're not emotionally available. Are you like looked inward? You know, trying to like assess the situation. Maybe I'm not. I I could, I am definitely. I could be a part of the problem. Of course, it's a two people thing. But yeah. I think at the moment there is an epidemic with the, what? Yeah, there's an epidemic with men and their emotional availability <laughs> and their emotional maturity. I wow. would say so, hundred percent. Well, if you say so. So how, in in general though, how has life changed for you? Because I think 
What do you want me to call you, by the way? What do you, you people call, call you? Fire. Okay, I think in I think obviously a lot of people became aware, more aware of you from the song Peru. However, you was around before that. So how has that been for you, though? How has your life adjusted, even though you've been here for a while, but now it's a different level? How, is that, how does that feel for you? Um, I expected it, but I didn't expect to experience the intricacies of it, like the right. details and everything inside. And I don't think you can ever prepare yourself for you know, what, what you're going to see out there when you, when you become like, internationally recognized. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I went from just being known in Nigeria to being known in Africa, and now it's like, yeah, but the old wide world thing, and it's. I mean, it's only recent, so we, I mean, I'm getting pretty used to adjusting to it. But I'm not. I know it's gonna get crazier in the next couple of years, right, okay. and I I won't lie to myself and say, oh, let me prepare myself for this. No, I'm, I know I'm never gonna be ready for whatever it is I'm gonna meet. So like, I'm just taking it one step at a time. Do you feel like the song became bigger than you per se? So it's like. What I mean by that is, like I was saying at the beginning, you'd hear it all the time on the radio, but sometimes you wouldn't necessarily associate who it was. You just knew kind of the song until you'd be like, okay, oh, okay, da 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 da. So, do you ever feel like the song got. People know you now, but in the beginning stages, did it feel like the song became, was a bit bigger than you as an artist, if that makes sense? No, I never feel that way because right. that's usually how it happens. The song blows up True. and then it leads them to the artist. Unless you're like an extremely, extremely established artist beforehand. That's exactly. What I, yeah, that's yeah, why. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. If, if that was my first breakout hit, yeah, 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 I would be in trouble. That, that's that's big trouble. That's 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 almost entirely certain you're going to be a one hit wonder. Right, if right, your right. very first breakout single becomes an inter international smash, that's yeah. a that's a big one to come out of. And I'm glad that's not the case with me. Do you ever worry though about a song being as big, your next songs being as big as that. So when I sat down with Ed, he was saying that, like Shape of You, he probably would never stream those numbers again. However, he still streams mad numbers, but the way people see it as because, because it's not as big as Shape of You, it's almost like, oh, well, you've fallen off. Yeah, You're not doing that, that well kind of anymore. Stuff. But it's like, no, mate, I'm still doing millions and billions of streams, so I'm doing perfectly fine. It, did you, do you ever feel, have that kind of feeling as well? No, no. honestly. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm, I'm not just self-aware as a, as a person, I'm also self-aware as an artist. Mm -hmm. So I understand that this is how things are. Like, you most certainly would not have your next single after an international smash being bigger than that. It's going to take a while for another one to come. And maybe you might never have right, such right. a big record again, but you've made a mark, you've made a huge record, and you've, you've garnered listeners, you've garnered an audience. What, what more do you want? <laughs> well, I would just like to, because you obviously know this yourself, but for the people at home that didn't know this, he said he made a mark with Peru. And this is, you did, right, so I'm going to read out all the stats now, okay? Okay. So, hit single, spent 11 weeks in the top five, 20 weeks in the top 10, and 22 weeks in the top 20. No other single has seen 20 consecutive weeks in the top 10 in 2022. <laughs> Big up you, okay. Amazing. In, 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 quarter, in quarter one, Peru was the highest streamed UK repertoire out of any UMG single. So, like, did you know that? No. I'm, see, I'm even telling you things that you didn't even know yourself. Peru is the best selling UMG single uh, this year, number two in the whole of the UK. Um, so, it was number two in the, the whole of the UK. Amazing. Peru is platinum in the UK. Amazing. Global streams, 102 million plus. UK streams, 45.8 million. That's just the UK. That is mad to hear that. Like hearing that back to your, like me saying that, you know, obviously you're, it's due. But to hear those numbers. It's crazy. I almost, I never like to think about it, to right. be honest. Because the more you think about it, the easier it is to just get lost in the euphoria of everything. I just like, you bury yourself in it like, oh, I want to do more. Can yeah. I have another of this? You know, you get some stupid thoughts and I don't want that for myself. So can you talk to me about the beginning, like the beginning? Because when I watch your performances, um, I feel like you 
have a genuine like love for music you can see it in your artistry you can see it in the way you perform like the way you sing and everything like that so can you talk to me like about the beginning stage like how you even got into music was it always something that you wanted to do um like how did it come about like this career this path you're on right now um yeah well unlike some people i it took me a while um well that's relative anyway but as at 10 11 12 i knew i could sing and I just thought, oh, it's just something I could do. But <laughs> I, I focused more on writing. That's one of the gifts I discovered earlier. I could write poems and stuff like that. So I was writing imaginary poems, imaginary girlfriends and stuff like Can that. Can you remember any of them? I do not want to remember. <laughs> those, were the corniest, those were the corniest moments of my life and I don't want to go back to them. But I bet you that emotionally, that, that girls that say you're emotionally available, I bet they wish you could go back to that corny stage of your life, see? Yes, I mean, that was getting Women want girls. corny. Come we want on. corny. We want poems. Do, Just let, do, do you? Yes. Let me That's tell you something. That's what you're saying, but you'll end up with the bad guys. And no, listen, we'll go back to this. We are. But let me tell you something. Anything that a girl finds corny in a guy, she doesn't like them enough, in my opinion. Because I think any time you really like a guy, there's nothing he can do that is corny. If a girl finds something you do corny, she doesn't like you. Because another guy would do the exact same thing and she'll love it. Fair point. But I still think they were really corny. Okay. You don't want to see those poems. Okay, well back to the, okay, yeah. the, the poems were corny. So, yeah, so we were I writing was... corny... Um, <laughs> Poems. Poems go ahead, stuff. go on. And yeah. um, it wasn't until I, I went to uni, I was 16. Mm -hmm. So second year in uni, I was 17. And I was rolling with the cool kids because, I mean, why not? Yeah. <laughs> and then I ended up in the studio. The cool kids in my school were the artists, the rappers, the dancers, whatnot. So I, I just followed them to the studio one day and jokingly made a song. And they were like, <laughs> actually, back then I used to be a rapper. So they were surprised. They were like, never in your life rap a single word in your life after this word. What? And then I took the, the, the demo and went back to my dorm room and I was listening to the song all night. It was a corny song, of, of course, but it meant a lot to me and it just poof, blew my mind. Because prior to that, I felt empty. I mean, I had gifts and all that, but I didn't know what exactly I wanted to do. But that moment, I was like, nah, this is it, man. Mm -mm. And then, yeah. My grades started to drop. I wasn't going to class. I was spending more time being a studio rat. A studio rat is someone, a studio boy. Okay, right. Well, someone who cleans the studio, goes to buy food for the artists. So that's up how you started equipment. off? Yeah. Okay, nice. You know, clean okay. up the equipment. I even ran errands for my schoolmates who came to record. Right. You know, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a precious moment because I was learning. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they realized I could write and I had melodies, so I was writing for artists and stuff like that. And subconsciously, I was building up myself too, because, I mean, and final year, I finally had the balls to tell my father to his face that I, I wanted to go to Lagos. I was tired of school. I, wanted, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to finish. I told my dad, I don't want to finish. I want to go to Lagos and and and, 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 how was, and how was that reception? Surprisingly, it was like, I think it was just tired. <laughs> it was tired of my wala. <laughs> I was like, go. But he's a very dramatic person. Right, okay. I, I, I learned that from him. It was like, sign this on a taken. You would do so, 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 so. And I, I signed everything like, oh, yeah. So what was it? What did it say? Uh, you must listen to me at all times. Okay. After two years, if you fail to, you know, Dude, bring yeah. out something substantial from this, you will do whatever I ask you to do. Right. And I was like, yeah, yeah sure. No problem. And so did you know that two years was a, long, was a long enough time? At that time, I really just wanted to get out of that right. situation. Like, I did not care. But deep down inside me, I knew, with the level of talent that I had, I knew that I, something had to happen right. if I pushed hard right. and long enough. So I just went to Lagos with blind faith and whipped up something. I, just, I was hanging out with people, studios. I experienced a lot of stuff. Saw a dead body for the first time. Um, witnessed a lot of mothers not a lot mm -hmm. maybe a couple it was rough how so why did i you... wasn't in a gang right, right, but right. 
there you don't have to be in a gang to witness stuff like that right. you just have to be living around yeah so like it was tough for me because i was seeing life for the first time so but before like your home environment would you say you was quite sheltered like it was a nice environment for you yes you was, okay, i cool. grew up in an average we're well, not rich but we're yeah. average and my parents they're scholars so you know even if they didn't have enough money they were always like going out of their way to make sure that children lived a nice, semblance yeah. of a nice sheltered life mm. but aside that i just didn't have any friends and i didn't want to have any friends what, I, back home or in late air i mean uh, when you went to all my life okay. okay you know and i just sought solace in writing spending time with myself do you think you st you're still like that is so that you kind of like to keep yourself to yourself yeah i'm like that and it kind of affected it was good it was going great for some time right. i mean this air of mystery, always oh, fireball, what kind of person is he? <laughs> but I think at some point, there was a time in my career where I needed to step outside of that shell and just get into my superstar vibe, like mm -hmm. really enjoy my superstardom. And I think this is it. So and that's why we have Playboy now coming up. Do, do, you, do you feel though that um, this is more you or, or, or why was you like that? Because I feel like introvert people, maybe there's a reason why, not like we're trying to do a counselling session now or yeah. anything like that, <laughs> but like, you know, like what feels more comfortable, how you are now? Or do you feel like you were suppressing it? No, this is just a face. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. You know, and I just want to enjoy it. Right. I don't want to suppress it. Yeah. I want to it might last a couple of years, mm -hmm. yeah. but it will be a moment. Right. I mean, they'll be like, oh, do you remember the time Fireboy finally came out of his shell and did this and did that and did that? Oh, good times. Now he's back to his shell. <laughs> Crazy guy. <laughs> you know, I, I want him to be like that. I don't want to like, because I'm, I'm always overthinking stuff. Well, I almost did not I release Peru. A, I think it's a creative thing though. I think as a creative, no, we overthink. Honestly, not all. There are some creatives like Olamide that they just have, I don't know if it's a higher level of faith in right, what they okay. do. They just do it right. and they don't overthink they just do it and yeah. they believe in it and it goes out and it's successful and it's bang 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 like it's crazy to have that level of artistry it's not all creatives that are overthinkers uh, maybe because I, i'm well, I, I overthink a lot like i overthink everything and i think a lot of people around me they overthink but they but would you say that energy is rubbing off on you now? You're learning to just enjoy the moment. Like you performing at the BET Awards, you done wireless. Um, was you Afro Nation? No. You wasn't Afro Nation this year. I was, sorry, sorry. I thought there were so many different um, artists. Um, uh, but one thing I do want to talk to you about, I know obviously everyone talks to you about Ed, but I want to talk to you about working with Madonna. Because right. <laughs> had, obviously Ed is Ed, yeah. but Madonna, like, I mean, what, what, was, what was that like? Because she is, yeah, she's like one of the goats in this thing. Like, she's, she yeah, set the pace for a lot of that's things. That's the queen of pop, she, bro. Like, she is. I would, I would definitely <laughs> hundred oh, to give her pop. that, definitely. Yeah. What was, how did that even, yeah. I mean, it was weird because, funny enough, she's been a fan since 2019 when I broke out. Right, right, yeah. My, she, she loved my first album, Laughter Tears and Boost Bumps. Yeah and she was always like using songs off the album in her videos right. on instagram and i saw that i was like wow it's madonna and i you know think that oh this is amazing thank you so much she's like oh, no, i'm a fan it's cool and that, that was it right. and then fast forward to 2022 this year yeah yeah she sent me a dm like yo i want you to be part of something i'm doing i want to revamp a classic of mine are you interested I'm like fuck yes of course Man, why not? Don't you think it's so weird now that people like Madonna can literally just reach out to you, forget management or anything, mm -hmm. they can DM you and be like, yo, you want to jump in the track? And you're like, eh? is this, you know those ones, like, you have to like screenshot it just in case they delete it, like screenshot. So when I tell my, my manager, like, they, they believe yeah. me, like it was there. Like, where was you when you received that DM? I was in my studio, my home studio at home. And I was, yeah, I was recording, I was making a song. I just dumped whatever it was I was doing. I'm like, oh, yo, nice, amazing. And it was immediate because we got to work immediately. She sent me the file and we discussed over WhatsApp the details. She's very thorough. Right, okay, right, yeah. And so she was involved in my verse. She was saying, oh, I don't like this part. Take this one out. I'm like, okay, nice. I'm going to leave this part in though. This is, like, <laughs> this is part of my roots. This is I was going to say that to you. Is there anything she said that you were like, uh, I get your Madonna, yeah, but I, like, I'm also no one doing here. No, I have to like put my essence yeah, yeah, of my yeah. afro beats. like there's a reason you called me yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. come on like yeah so yeah they were we had back and forth but it was cool it was amazing and we linked up to shoot a video that was a moment 
I think it's one of my favorite videos you know ever shot, even though it's not my song. Right, right, yeah, yeah. She yeah, is yeah. a vibe for a 63 year old woman. She's quite. <sighs> I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> I can just imagine. She must be just. It's Madonna. She's very sarcastic. She's got a lot of pervy jokes. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We love she's it. She's amazing. She's very funny. She's she's she has a colorful personality. It's amazing. What what um, what song would you say changed your life? Outside of your own songs, maybe. What song would you say has changed your life? You listened to it and you was like, yeah, this it sparked something, or it maybe even sparked mm. you. you oh, like personally for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say tattoo. Okay. Because it's a song that I was so deliberate about. Mm -hmm. Like I've never been so deliberate about a song like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm deliberate about all my songs, mm -hmm. but down to the production, the vision I had for the song. The song goes like, doom, doom, pa, doom, doom. And I wanted to imitate two lovers having sex and the guy is like thrusting slowly like, doom, doom. <laughs> it was weird because, it was really weird because when and we made the song, I drink it was wine. just, Would oh. you drink red wine that day? No. Let's see, okay. It was <laughs> white wine. Okay. It was very weird because it was just me and the producer in okay, the room. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And it was, I just told him not to be weird about it. I'm like, I want to make a sex song. Don't be weird about it. I know we're just two guys in the room. Relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, it's like, <laughs> don't, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but don't it make was, it, yeah. It was an amazing vibe. And everything I envisioned for the song came out in reality. And I'm just so proud that I did that. Because I'm, I'm, as an artist, there's nothing that means more to an artist than bringing an idea to life. Every single part of that song came out to life. And I'm so glad about it. How, how are you feeling about um, Afrobeats at the moment? Um, obviously, it's taken over. Like, I would never, ima well, I would because we're here now. But back in the day when I grew up watching BET Awards and all those kind of things, I would never ma imagine seeing how they much they embrace Afrobeats now, performing on the live stage. It's not like you're doing the pre-show. You're literally there in the building. They're loving you. How does how does that feel for you as an Afrobeats artist? The way the world is now accepting it and and taking in in Afrobeats. I was I wasn't surprised. You wasn't. <laughs> I was not surprised. It was only a matter of time. You know, like even before us, like them, Fela, King Sonny at the era, labels, international labels were chasing them around because you know the the sound was amazing. And then at some point there was a disconnect. Right, yeah. I don't know why or how, and then. The, the the course started again and then we started pushing hard again. We have them debanded them two face to whiskey, David O'Brien, Olamide. When it got to our turn and I saw the soundscape, I'm like, oh, it's only a matter of time. And I knew it was gonna be a host that would do it. Right, right, yeah. And that's the beauty of Afrobeats, you know, passing it from generation to generation. It's just amazing. Like it was only a matter of time for the world to catch up. And there's more. Like yeah. this is just scratching the surface. Yeah. Um Going back to, obviously, you did Peru, then you had that remix with Ed. Um, around, when that happened, there was a lot of conversation that I saw, obviously, a lot of people loved it, but also there was a conversation about, which also happened when Wizkid got Justin Bieber on the, on the song, and there was that whole conversation of, why do we need somebody from outside of the culture jumping on, of the, jumping on the song which I actually just think they mean somebody white because that's what it, because people like Ed are a part of the culture. So really what they just mean is, so for you, because there was so much conversation around that, around um, when, like I said, Justin, it was all this like, we yeah. don't need them. Yeah, they yeah, doesn't, yeah, they, they, yeah, why yeah, do we yeah, have yeah. to do, the song was doing amazing before yeah. anyway. Like how, what did that feel like for you? Because I always roll my eyes when I see stuff like that. Yeah, Cause right. I'm not really a fan of gatekeeping stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like for, I mean, for sounds like Afrobeats, reggae, um, ama piano that are deeply rooted in culture, there's no need to get keep. No one is taking anything from you. Relax. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's ours. It's, it's impossible to take reggae from. <laughs> it's not possible right, right. to take Afrobeats from us. Like, so I, I need people to start seeing it as just two artists who just came together to collaborate on a song. It doesn't matter if one is white or if one is a big artist or if one is an international artist. No. Like, it's just two cultures coming together to make 
record it's nothing deep because I think also but people have to kind of make up their mind as well because there's always that conversation about you know art like music like afro beats or reggae or whatever not being globally recognized right and I think sometimes well over here obviously we only make up like a small percentage so uh, to, to to be fair like sometimes I always look at things from like a business point of view and also it's like if you want something to be become a global thing then you you have allies or you have people that can take it to a larger exactly. audience that can be like, you know They're what, to this person is so dope. I know my fan base probably are not going to be aware of him just because they're not, because that's just the way the world works. Yeah. But I'm going to make you aware of him. So I think to me, it's always a little bit weird when people, I get both sides. I understand both sides because I've had conversations where I'm like, do we, how does this work? Right, yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> like, you know, like when really that's probably the, only the problem basic. Is, yeah, the only problem is when it seems forced. Right, okay. When there's no organic or natural vibe to it, that's when you can tell, like, oh, there's no, there's a disconnect somewhere. That's when you can have a problem. But when an artist announces, oh, so 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 person is going to be on the record, they start frothing in the mouth. Ah, ooh, ah, ee. Shut the fuck up, I just enjoy the did music. You, did you ever worry about the authenticity of? Ed Sheeran being on the song. Did you ever worry about it feeling not, not authentic? Not one bit, because okay. he, he loves the song. And like, he loves you could even tell from, from the way he acts about the song yeah, when, yeah, yeah. when the song came out. The way he keeps pushing, the way the videos from our video shoots, the energy was right, everything was amazing. And when I heard his verse, when, I, when they first told me it was going to be on the record, I'm like, ah, oh, amazing, finally. Yeah. Because prior to that, I've been getting offers from labels and other artists that wanted to be on the record. I'm like, nah, it doesn't yeah, feel yeah. right. And then head came, I'm like, oh yes, this is someone I connect with sonically. Mm -hmm. And when I heard this verse, I was even more excited. I'm like, they're gonna complain when I announce this, but when they hear this song, they they'll love it. it. You know, and it, it went all out. Like he really took his time. And when we had the video shoot, he told me, it was like, he felt really bad about me having to take out my second verse for ears, because wow. he really loves the second verse. And we sang the second verse together. That's how you know he listened to the song. He yeah. wants to be a part of the culture. Not that he wants to be, he already is a part of the culture. This is not his first time collaborating on an Afrobeat record. I always say so. I feel like he has a good level of like culture appreciation. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? There are people that you see and you're just like, oh mate, leave it out, like stop. I but with him... I think he's just a good human being. Yeah, and that's what it is. You can tell that he genuinely likes whatever he's a part of, if, or he's genuinely interested like when he came on the show he was telling me like oh yeah when you interviewed this person i'm like why is ed sheeran watching like what is going on here like he would tell me like things that i'm like oh yeah i forgot i even interviewed those that person so i i totally i totally get what you mean so guys obviously we just had to take a, a quick break and we've come back with champagne you know what i'm saying champagne, champagne. <laughs> cheers cheers because um you know fire only likes to drink the finer things in life and i'm here for it you know well, this is the first time we've ever had champagne on the ZZ Mill show. I feel hard, And uh, It's matching the whole aesthetics. I'm loving, because you've got the purple and then there's this champagne glass. Just When you see it, you're going to see how regal it looks. And he said, I can't wait. What I was going to say to you was before we had a little, two things actually. I noticed that you changed your profile picture to Tupac. Yeah. Is he like inspiration? Is he someone you look <sighs> up to? Trust me, I wish. Is that, is that, that you know, thug life. <laughs> nah. You just um, it, it's my, my next single okay. drops on Friday. Um, I, I we sort of like made um, a tribute to him. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, I made a reference to the bandana. Okay, the nice. title of the song is bandana. Okay, nice, so nice, like, nice. You, you know, he wears the bandana. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just made it like it's just. I, I do just an artist being an artist. It's okay, not I hear that. And then it gets people talking because now everyone's like, why has he changed it to That's Tupac? That's how we do. See, Two now, years ago, I would never have done that. Oh, why? Because you would think it's too, like, yeah, like contrived. Exactly. Yeah, I'm a, I, listen. Dark I like, times. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm always, I've been like that. And as I've got, I got more confident, actually, in myself and rating myself and my, what I produce. I'm like, no, I saw, I don't know if you've seen it, you probably have because it's been doing the rounds of uh, Tyler, the creator, talking about people promoting their stuff. Like you spend all the time in the studio, like you said, you'll spend the time writing it and then you just put it on your story once and in your inst in, on your grid one time, you do one tweet and that's like, and he's like, are you for real? <laughs> like like you, you thought of the whole process and it's true, it's like, 
I feel like the world we're living in now, the quick world that we're living in, we don't get to enjoy things anymore. And it's almost like, oh, we, and also we kind of want to make things seem like we didn't think them out, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like in this weird world of like, oh, it's just a whim. Yeah. I just made it like this, I'm dope. But it's like, no, I thought there was a whole process. How, like talking about quickness and stuff like TikTok. So how do you, as an artist, how do you find the whole TikTok era and, and, and how songs kind of become a thing on TikTok and then you kind of have to like almost grab it and then make it your own again, even though it is your own and take control of it. Because I feel I can't get TikTok for me. It's just, honestly, I go on that thing and I'll put like three videos. I'll do like Twitter, Insta, TikTok the same videos. Mm -hmm. Insta, mad interaction. Twitter, bit of interaction. TikTok, one like. <laughs> like, genuinely like- You're not giving them what they want. Yeah, but what is it? How talk to me? Because I feel it's, like- I guess you just have to be, I don't know. What's the word? You just have to do something, I don't know, for lack of a better word, stupid. Right, okay. Yeah, I, I don't get TikTok either. It was fun when songs blew up organically on TikTok. Yeah, right, yeah. And then you know how human beings now, we like to abuse something. Ah, TikTok is the way now. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's the part that's going to blow over. Right. Before you know, another thing will come again. You'll be like, ah, this yeah, is the yeah. way now. Yeah. Maybe something else. Maybe you have to like. And, and as <laughs> but, an like artist, but I think TikTok is always going to be relevant as, as in the a, grand scheme of things. As an artist, how do you balance both? Like, because you obviously you just said you understand the importance of TikTok, but they're not being in your head when you're making songs because i had this conversation with i think it was ck and he got upset with me because i said because like would you class yourself as a tiktok artist and i wasn't saying he was a tiktok artist but i was saying you know the song became huge on tiktok and then and he was just like tiktok is just another platform and i was like yeah i i totally get that but there's also a link but i was saying do you find it difficult to kind of like know that tiktok is a thing understand the importance but still stay true to yourself mm -hmm. as an artist how do you do that I think it's a headspace thing for me. That's why me, I don't, I don't go into the studio just because, oh, I think it's time for me to make a song. No, something yeah. else like, yeah, come to your head. And I think it depends on the energy with which you make the song. If you're making a song and you're imagining yourself on stage, 10,000 people singing along, it's different. If you're imagining yourself, maybe you're in the studio you're making a song and you're imagining, oh, this part is going to go viral. You know, yeah, yeah. that's when you start yeah. having such thoughts. So I think it's, it's a mind space thing. And I understand why CK will be mad because like, it didn't come from you. It came from conversations. Right, yeah. From and what you see on- everyone else saying, oh, yeah. it's just a viral mm -hmm, TikTok mm -hmm. song. Oh, thanks to TikTok, blah, 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 stuff like that. People will talk. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. normal stuff, but like, music is music. Do you ever get annoyed about, cause I can imagine you obviously you do, you speak a lot, you go out, you speak to people. Do you ever get annoyed about talking about Peru? Are you ever, <laughs> do you get to a point where you're like over it, people bringing, talking about Ed, or maybe even associating, linking how well you're doing to the fact that now because you had this feat, do you ever, does that ever annoy you? Where you're like, no, I'm my own artist. I was this person before any of this. Well, me, yeah, I have thick skin. Though. Like, <laughs> well, I didn't have thick skin at the beginning, but now I'm just, all these conversations happen on Twitter. Fan wars, you know. Right. The Rema fans, the Fireboy fans going at it. And right. It's always fun. I'm always just sitting back to mm -hmm. relax and watch. Sometimes I just go on Twitter and I'm like, what are they even fighting about today? And then you see stuff like that. Oh, thanks to Head. Blah, 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 blah. But I know that Peru was already a hit song. It was already on its way yeah. even before the Head mm -hmm. feature. And yes, there's no shame in saying the Head feature blew it like over the top. And that's, that's what collaborations are for. It was a successful collaboration. If it wasn't, I'll feel bad myself, you know, but it was a successful collaboration. And that's what happens when two genuine artists come together who care about a song and just make a song. So is your dad proud of you? Oh, very, oh, very. So nice uh, they always keep up with everything. Oh, They'll great. call me about this interview when they watch it, be like, you said so, 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 and so. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yes, 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 Your dad's yes, gonna yes. say, why did you tell everyone they had to start the contract? He always goes on about that, because this is not the first time I'm saying oh, it. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you beat me out to be, man. No, I just say what happened. I'm not saying like, bye, but bye, bye. I mean, they, they caught on quite. If it wasn't, I'll feel bad myself. You know, but it was a successful collaboration. And that's what happens when two genuine artists come together, who care about a song and just make a song. So is your dad proud of you? 
Oh, very. Oh, very. that's so nice. Uh, they always keep up with everything. Oh, that's They'll really call me about this interview when they watch it. Be like, you said so, 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 and so. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Your dad's yes, going to yes. say, why did you tell everyone they had to start the country? He always goes on about that because this is not the first time I'm saying oh, it. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you beat me out to be, but no, I just say what happened. I'm not saying, like, right, but right, right. I mean, they, they caught on quite early. Yeah. They didn't start supporting me when I became a superstar. They started supporting me when they saw that. Oh, this boy really means this stuff. Yeah. And when they saw that things started looking good, yeah. I actually make amazing music. Mm -hmm. I'm really passionate about it. And they're like, oh, okay. So, is there anyone else in your family that's like musically ta like talented? Not one soul. Really? It's yeah. weird. My dad doesn't sing. My mom doesn't sing. My mom was in the choir, but you know now. <laughs> <laughs> She's home. <all, all. laughs> Do you, come from, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you come from a religious background? Uh, well, not, not staunch yeah. religious, but yeah. yeah. My parents are believers. Of, I mean, yeah. So we went to church, did a normal stuff, but they were not like... Ugh. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you mean. Yeah, so it was good. Cool. Any, um, I know you've done like a, a collaboration with like Western, but what other kind of like UK artists are you really feeling and you would love to maybe do a, like a little I wanted to have Jos on the remix of Playboy because right, okay. I really really respect him and I, I, I respect I, I respect artists that do not just represent who they are they represent the culture and I think culturally Jos is like top three biggest rappers in the yeah UK. I would yeah if I would not, agree it's not three yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> culturally would, yeah, pop yeah. culture mm -hmm, impact mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jos is up there respectfully yeah. and I, I really connect with him and you know but Apart from that, I don't, I don't really, I respect everyone and I respect their, their hearts, but like for me, collaboration, I'm a very selfish songwriter, like I, re I never write a song and be like, ah, this person will sound good on the hook, no, yeah. I'm, I'm all in, right, like, right, right, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. after I record, like, and maybe Libba will be like, don't you think so, 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 person will sound good on it, I'm like, eh, okay, yeah, yeah maybe, yeah. but yeah, so, nah, I don't see it yet. What, what type of um, artist are you, are you like, difficult to to manage i should look over at your manager there as i said <laughs> are you like are you are you difficult to manage are you difficult because with me i think people have because of my show and my online perception i think in the beginning i found it really hard to get a manager because they were all thinking we're never gonna be able to tell her what to do because she just doesn't listen but i do listen within reason i might put up a fight and i might be a bit like mm, i don't think it is but yeah. then two hours later i'll be like okay cool like if that's what you guys think is best then that's fine what, what about with you? Like, what type of what type of person are you to manage? Do you, I think, do you know what you want and you kind of stick to it? I think I'm it? blessed because the people I surround myself with, my team, they know not to infringe or even intrude or butt into my creativity right, okay. at all. That they're always very careful mm -hmm. with, you know, when it comes to my creativity. But everything around, everything else around my career, my life, I mean, I listen to them, advice and everything. But they, they don't even... They don't even try to, you know, like, because they respect my creativity right, right, a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's, that's the best way. Yeah. And even if I do say so myself, I think I'm one of the easiest artists to manage. I mean, for now. For now. <laughs> so what have you got coming? What, what's, what's coming up? Um, you, I can see you're very much into fashion. Are you going to talk to me? What's happening? Definitely fashion, yeah. I, I don't like to rush into things. Mm -hmm. um, I like to, like I said, I'm an overthinker. And you're so young. Yeah. Well, maybe not really. No, you're 20, like... 26. Well, yeah. That's not really young. It is, trust me. I was having this conversation with someone else the other day. We're young, you know, still. I mean, I don't know, man. I really wanted to be that teenage sensation, man. Like, I wanted to be like that 17-year-old wonder kid. Oh, my gosh, you know, Like that no. whiz kid stuff. But I learned no, that sometimes... Perfect timing. Yeah, perfect timing. You yeah. have to learn. Not yeah. everybody can handle that kind of fame at that age. So, like, I'm really glad that it came later. So, yeah, I, I'm definitely going into fashion, but I want to, like, take my time. Mm -hmm build a network. I think that's very important. A lot of people go into stuff like that without building a network. I already have a network in music, but I don't have a network in fashion because right. it's, like, it's not my thing yet. So I want to go into movies. Because my manager says I'm a very dramatic person. Are you? Although I don't think On being dramatic of, what's, what, what is it, equal what is, to being a good actor. So no, like, it is, trust me, because you have to channel it all in. Right? You've got to channel it and be like, you know, like the, you got a channel. The time when you was angry, you remember the time when yeah, you was angry, and then you bring it all exactly. in. Exactly. See, so it's really hard. Like I'm very dramatic, but, but I'm not. So, what type of films would you want to do? What type of actor could you see yourself being? 
Um, I definitely see myself doing drama. What about like romantic comedy? <laughs> <laughs> I will laugh. I will not be able to go through it. Why? Nigerian girls as are much UK as people, girls. Peop, Nigerian. Uh, wait. <laughs> Mm. This is thoughtful. Yeah. Because I kind of see me like in a, in a way. They are both wala. Like, is there no other option like US babes? No, it's just Nigerian babes, UK babes. So basically, you do devil and the ocean. Let's see. Um, I've, had, I have, I've had enough. Of both? Of Nigerian girls. Okay. So like UK girls. Just because I'm curious. Yeah, UK girls. But if you get a Nigerian UK babes, Basically, that is like the worst. Oh, why? I don't know. I can't explain it. Because they've got that. They've got the extra. Um, Sometimes. Like I, I just. They've got the extra. Don't mess with me. I feel. Like don't. You can't. Don't even I mean, play it's games cool. with it's, me. It's there until they fall in love. Well, this is the thing. This is all until the catch feelings. This is not even. A, and you be like, is this not the the, the same hard girl, girl that I was met. telling you that she's like, busy? What's going on? Where's your job gone? <laughs> Like genuinely, I think that to myself all the time. You know, like happens I, to me all the time. Literally, I think that to myself. Like, where did your job go, Zizi? Because two weeks ago, when you didn't care for him, right? and he was saying to you, "Where are you?" and you're like, "Do you know what? I'm filming today. I have to do it like maybe another week." <laughs> now I'm like, I'm filming till six, <laughs> but I can be there at eight if you want me to. It's like, where did your job go? Right? You know, well, it's, it always it's happens to crazy. us. It's, that's a testament to you, though. That means they like you. Right? But I mean, come on. Do you feel like since you've become more internationally known, you've had more of a pick of the ladies? The ladies are... Well, I've always been sort Look, of... He's like, I've always been fly. Come on, <laughs> why, are you not, why are you doing me this like, easy? I'm fly. I'm just being honest with you. Okay. But then. of course, definitely, levels change. You meet supermodels. They're very toxic, by the way. <laughs> Every single one of them. And I love them for it. <laughs> <laughs> as he sips his champagne <laughs> really I feel like honestly I keep say, making blanket statements but I think w the group of people that are probably the most like weird messed up self-centered everything is about us main character syndrome is people in the entertainment industry people in front of the camera mm -hmm. not so much behind they're more level-headed but us in front of yeah. it oh my god we are literally the worst and I have to include myself in it because I'm, it's I'm absolute glad. mess it's it's beautiful. I love it so much. I can't love even it. lie. I know. I love the chaos. So do I. I, <laughs> said I just want to have one summer, like where I just go wild with somebody. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Do think like people that bring out the worst <laughs> in you. Exactly. But I mean, the worst can be fun and stuff. But I think the worst is always fun. Yeah. Sorry. So back to what have you got planned? What's happening? Tell us what to look out for. My third album, Playboy. 5th of August, it's going to be amazing. It's a different side of me, it's a different kind of music. It's straightforward, no messing around, no lovey-dovey vulnerable thing that they used to. I mean, there's still some soul and in being intentional behind the songwriting and all that stuff, but it's just straightforward music, like no wasting time. I'm not even over, I didn't even overthink any of the records. I just like, okay. Yeah. I mean, but there's still that theme it's still cohesive, very much so, like an album should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's very straightforward. It's like straight to the point. Just Do you think we've gone past the era of music of people like talking about love and being in love anymore? Oh, never, especially with Afrobeats. What's you, Afrobeats without a love song? Said, you said it's not vulnerable. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, there are love songs on the album, but they're, okay, they're not cool. vulnerable love okay. songs. They are like, I'm only doing this because I have to love songs. That's not love. That's, well, love that's, songs. You, you know what I mean by love songs, obviously. Not crying in the rain. Yeah, but that's what I want. Night. I want crying oh, in the on. rain songs. Yeah, Please. why not? I did love that in the first and second album. No, I mean just in general with music. There's a shift, because you said not anymore. So like, I guess you're going, not going with the shift, but there's a sh I think there's a shift in the world. Mm. So at the moment, like you said, back in the day, like your first, second album, you'll have that, oh, ah, yeah. yeah. And now everyone's kind of like, nah, bro, we're not on that. It's just... No, no it's not that. It's just, for me, it's, it's, it's a mind space. I took a trip to the United States for the first time in my life. Okay. Went to New York, 
with a cigarette in my hand and walked the streets of New York with a cigarette in my hand. And that moment, those 15 minutes changed my life. Why go and tell Because me? nobody gave a fuck about me. <laughs> I was just walking on the road. I felt so free. I wasn't smoking it. I just held it in my hand and I was just like, just for the... I felt like a regular New York guy, just right. like taking a walk. And it just switched something in me. And I took that energy with me to Miami. Mm -hmm. Felt some fake boobs for the first time in my life. What, fake boobs? Yeah, it was amazing. What did, have you felt a fake bum before? Yeah, I'm sure she has fake bum. Did she have? Yeah, it was fake. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. Oh, did it feel nice? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. For me, I was just intrigued. You know. So am I. So I like, mean, it wasn't about the niceness for me. It was just ah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so this is it. Right, right, hey, right. That's okay. nice. So, you know, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was amazing. They literally had to drag me out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Fireboy? Where's Fireboy? <laughs> I was about to remove the last <laughs> word of cash. Be like, ah, it's time to go. Oh, shit, nice one. But it was fun. And I straight went to San Francisco. Right, okay. And then I made Peru. Wow. It was an amazing journey. And making that song and seeing how that song blew up even when I didn't want to release it because I was overthinking it. I'm like, ah, oh, it's, so, it's just a 40 minute freestyle. It's, it doesn't have depth. It's such a loosely made song. Right, like, right, right. And it became a global smash. I'm like, ah, oh, so maybe you're overthinking too much. And it just like put me, I'm like, in a different mind space. I'm like, ah, oh, it's so, finally time for a new album. That's Amazing. so weird though, because a lot of people, they have, you, it's like you did the opposite. Like a lot of people have the success and then they go into the studio and put bare pressure on themselves. Cause like we were talking about earlier, that pressure of like, oh my God, I need to make that thing again. But it's, it's nice to hear that it did the opposite for you and was just made you be like, I'm, because essentially it's just believing in yourself because it's like actually when I wasn't thinking about it, I was dope. Yeah. So why do I need to overthink? Because I'm dope anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to make dope exactly. shit because I'm dope. So that's kind of, It yeah. wasn't like that before that though. I was doubting myself. I was questioning my, I, I thought I lost my mojo. And then I experienced my first ever writer's block in wow. between that time. Okay. It never happened to me before. I literally had to text Ola Mide like, what's going on? Um... I can't make it songs anymore. It's like, calm down. First time, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yes, first time. I'm like, no, it's cool. You get over it. Maybe you just need to take a break. Just travel to the US, travel to Yankee, and don't worry, everything will change. And then, then and that was it. And that's when the idea and the theme for the album came about. Uh, quickly, you probably have mentioned this a lot of time, but just in case people haven't actually know, what does DML stand for? It's from my name, Damola. Okay, right. Yeah, it was just. That was my stage name before, before Fireball. Okay, right, okay. It was just DML. Okay. And then one day I'm like, okay, you have been shouting you want to blow up. When you blow up and people search your name online, what do they want to see? So I type DML online and I'm seeing data manipulation language. I'm like, nah, <laughs> this is not going to be my legacy. <laughs> Something has to change. <laughs> so so I'm done. I changed it. <laughs> okay, cool. And it makes sense now? Yeah, it does. Fireboy DML. It I makes... mean, it makes sense because... I'm famous. <laughs> it, 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 it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It make, it, that, was the, that was the right decision to make. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, thank you so much. Um, tell the people where they can find you, where they can listen to the, when the album's coming out, all that good stuff. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? My name is Fireboy DML. Um, I hope you had fun. Um, <clears throat> don't be surprised. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, F I R E B O Y DML. I just, send me a DM on Twitter and I just might flirt back. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I would say TikTok, but I'm not the one I need that account. <laughs> Basically, so. you'll be running into management if you send anything. Yeah, you'll be flirting with management. Exactly. But he said the DMs are open on Twitter. I mean, Insta and Twitter. Yeah. Sliding DMs, girls, you never know what might happen. And we out. Thank you so much, guys. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell everybody. We out.